Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Jetpacks. Jetpacks to the Bank. Uh, coming off that great win over the uh, Atlanta Braves last night off a tremendous uh, relay throw down to Nap. First off, uh, Joe, how you doing today? Uh, doing well, doing well. I mean, the Phillies came off a win. We're trying to build on it tomorrow with Arietta snapping it back and pitching like he did his first couple times. So. Absolutely. Very big series coming up. Phillies trail the Nationals by a half a game. And you got a big series here, three games set, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, against the Nationals. Uh, first off, you just mentioned it. You got Arietta tomorrow night. You're a uh, yeah, most experienced player in the rotation. And he's going up against Eric Fetty of the uh, Washington Nationals, uh, more of a younger guy. Uh, he's sitting at 1-1, one one, 2.55 ERA, and Arietta's sitting at 1-3 and three with a 4.95 ERA. So when you see these two matchups off the bat, what are you expecting tomorrow night? Well, I would expect Arietta to look better than he is. Also, um, tomorrow night's going to be one of those nights if you're a pitcher that likes if you're a pitcher that likes pitching on a warm night where you can just kind of let it go and be free and easy. It's supposed to be hot as heck tomorrow. So if Arietta is one of those guys, that's obviously going to help him immensely. Uh, Fetty's a guy that just got going this year. So you don't really know exactly what they have in him yet because for his career, he has a five-something ERA. So, like, he just started going. He's a young pitcher. Uh, he was picked, actually, in the first round in 14. So uh, they're still trying to develop him. So he definitely has talent. I just think – I think this is a, probably about split because if Jake can pitch like he did in his first few games and Fetty's starting to come into his own, then I would say at this point of Arietta's career and where Eric Fetty's at now – it's probably a wash about of a pitching matchup. So I would say this game would be more decided within the inner workings of the game, like the lineup who can actually not make stupid defensive plays, like all that, all that type of stuff. So what you're saying is this very well could turn into a bullpen game. Well, that's if both of them stink. I mean, the pitching matchup's kind of a wash. So like they could both also pitch their better games and go six strong. And both come out after the sixth and only give up one. Because, like I, like I said, I think the pitching matchup's almost even. So it's kind of depends what you get with them because they're two pitchers. You get this or you get that. And that's because Fetty's still developing where Jake's at the twilight. So that's why you have it with Jake. No, I, I agree completely. It's, it's going to be a good matchup tomorrow. Two different story tell, tellings of, the, um, of these starters. And, and it'll be interesting to see what you can get out of them. Um, obviously Arietta has not looked the best, uh, outside that those first couple starts, he keeps running into one bad inning, a uh, bad ending here and there, and it creates problems and, and gets him knocked out of the start. Uh, this, this is, uh, Eric, uh, Fetty, every time I say that guy's name, I want to say Freddie, but, uh, Eric Fetty, uh, is coming off a rough or coming off a little long layoff. He hasn't pitched since, uh, August 13th, uh, because of rain His start was postponed. Um, and against the Phillies, he's two and one with a 4.22 ERA in four starts against the Phillies. So, gonna be interesting to see that. That's a nice ERA for, uh, against this lineup, but obviously they're finding ways to win, uh, win those games. So, we'll see what we're able to do. And, and before we talk about the offense, because obviously pretty much both sides will have the same offense there every night. I want to just continue through these uh, pitching matchups. But real quick, before we finish that off, I know you basically said it's gonna be pretty close between the two. But if you had to lean one way or the other, who has the advantage, Arietta or Fetty? Probably, honestly, uh, Washington. Okay. So Washington wins matchup one there. Not game-wise, but just pitching matchup. Uh, moving on to game two. Two, uh, two veterans have been in the league for a little while. Honestly, might have started similar times. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like Corbin, or Aaron Nola against Patrick That's Corbin. Like I feel like they probably started around the same time. Uh, Nola this year, obviously, outside that last start, has been very dominant, uh, two and two. 3.10 ERA, 40 strikeouts, going against Corbin, who's also 2-2, two two, 3.99 ERA, and 31 strikeouts. And you know Aaron Knoll is dying to get back on the field after that rough outing against the Braves. Uh, very uncharacteristic of him. Uh, before we get into the matchup itself, I mean, I know I do, but do you expect Noel to kind of bounce back there and just that was just one rough outing? Yeah, yeah, I think Noel will bounce back. I think um... – I think I'll have a good game in this game. I mean, normally you don't see back-to-back off starts other than last season, like twice uh, from Noah, but he looks back again with his movement. Even in that one game, he just was off, and then he blew up the one inning 
Uh, he still had movement on his pitches. It wasn't like he was pitching flat like last season again. So um, I think he's fine. I think he's going to bounce back right away. Obviously, Patrick Corbin isn't anything to sneeze about, though. So um, that's what you'd hope for. So that's a matchup that's going to be fun to watch again. Um, Noah throughout his career, Corbin has 210 games at 380. I'm pretty sure Aaron Noah has not hit close to that game plateau yet. He has not. Uh, he has 132 and a 3.47. So they're a little spaced, but I mean, they're pretty, ah. they're like Noah when he's dominating is probably more of a, uh, of an upper echelon pitcher than Corbin, but Corbin when he's pitching like last year is pretty much right there with Noah. So like these two are kind of hard to say who has the, upper hand here um i would say this season though noah because of oh uh, everything i saw and how good he looked other than that last game that brought up his era corbin's been more like seesawing this year like up and down so i would say uh, we have the slight advantage there but again it's patrick corbin and i think he's pitched good against us a couple of times i'm not sure but i'm pretty sure he is there's my final stat of this matchup. Uh, Corbin was 2-0 and with a 2.88 ERA uh, in four starts against the Phillies last season. Oh, terrific. And he struck out 30, uh, 30 players in 25 innings. Obviously, Phillies offense has looked a lot better this year than they did last year for the majority of it. Um, I will say, looking at these two early matchups, obviously it's different because he's struggling big time right now, but Scott Kingery's got good numbers off uh, Fetty and um, – Corbin. So interesting to see. Maybe this could be a series. Kingery gets a little hot here. And then going into the final matchup here, uh, you got, let's just say, a very, uh, very optimistic rookie for the Phillies here against a long term veteran who's been around the game and has been very dominant outside of this year. He's looked a little off compared to normal. Um, and that will be the Phillies rookie Spencer Howard, who is 0-1 with a 6.17 uh, ERA and 11 strikeouts in three starts. And then Max Scherzer is 2-1 with a 4.31 ERA with 44 sh- uh, strikeouts. Listen, I understand on paper everyone's going to pick Max Scherzer. But as you talked about last uh, with the last matchup, if you're strictly looking at this year and what is we've seen, and obviously you're still going to give the, the edge to Scherzer here, but is is this closer than most people would expect just because of how Scherzer looked off so far this year? Um, it depends on the Phillies. Because if you're taking out Howard no matter what at 65 to 68 pitches, then they win the matchup in a landslide. Because Scherzer's going to go way past 69 pitches or 68 or 67 or 90 even. Like Scherzer usually, unless if he's having a bad game, goes to at least 95 or something pitches so um unless if this is the game they take the rails off of howard i would say i would still have to give it to washington because of our own coaching staff and i'm not saying they're necessarily wrong well no actually i guess i am yeah you actually are wrong. <laughs> uh yeah you need to um take the the reins off in a 60 game season you're gonna have an off season get over it uh pitch them a little bit more if he's having if he doesn't pitch well still, then you're going to pull him back, obviously, by default, and you're going to work on some things. Um, so that's the only way you're going to get to see him get out of those innings like last game. So I just think they even told him, eventually you're going to pitch out of those situations. Well, why the hell didn't he pitch out of it then? Like, like Saying that makes you seem dumber. Like You just should have never released that you said that to him to the media. <laughs> it makes you seem dumber. Um, yeah, it seems so, hypocritical, that's all. Yeah, where... They need to let the leash go off of him, but that's why I would give the matchup to the Nationals, especially because I'm pretty sure Scherzer's pretty damn good against uh, the Phillies, too, and I don't know if he's going to forget how to pitch against us, but we'll see what happens there. No, I agree. Um, I'm going to go the opposite here. I'm going to say Phillies have the advantage in two of the three. I I like Arietta more than Fetty. Uh, I know it's saying a lot with Arietta. I just, I don't know. I feel like Philly's going to hit Fetty around a little bit. And, and the encouraging 4.22 ERA from last year, I think they can take advantage of that this year with obviously a better offense currently on how they're performing. Uh, before we wrap this up here in, in this nice little edition of uh, Jetpacks to the Bank preview, um, what, what would you say has to be the key to this Philly's offense? Uh, I'm going to go with, I like numbers, so I'm going to play a numbers game. 
I'm going to say I like Scott Kingery. Um, off Fetty, he's hitting uh, 429. Off of Corbin, uh, Kingery's hitting 300. And then even off Scherzer, he's got – Kingery's hitting uh, 375 off Scherzer. Um, I, I doubt Kingery's going to play all three games with the way he's been platooned, but I, I think he gets a start or two out of this series, especially with one lefty being in the, in, in the uh, Nationals rotation. So I like Scott Kingery. Some some way finding a little bit of a groove here because like we mentioned in, in our uh, recap the other day he's starting to hit the ball a little uh, harder and now he's got some pitching matchups that favor him so uh, I, I like Scott Kingery in a sleeper role here. What about you? Yeah, well with those numbers, Joe might put him in three times because he is a numbers guy. We found that out, so um, that that wouldn't surprise me if he is if he is in there for the extra game because I think he would get put in for two of three with those numbers at least. So. Uh, you just have to – the Nationals, obviously, I mean, it's kind of beating a dead horse, but you have to stop Soto, Turner, and, um, I mean, Castro is a guy that usually kills the Phillies. We don't have to worry about him. He's on the 10-day, so that helps us out a little bit. Um, so, But you have Luis Garcia, who I think is like 19. He's 20. That came up and is now doing really well for them. So there you go, the Nationals again having a – Crony year old come up, but so look out <laughs> for uh, look out for Luis Garz. Don't let him get to you. Carter Keyboom is struggling, but he obviously is a talent. Don't think his struggles are. Oh, let me just get a first pitch strike, like I've seen this team do in the past, and then it's oh look at that ball going to Canada. Um, so that's uh, what the Phillies just need to attack these hitters as you expect them to attack them, and our offense just has to keep doing its thing. I mean, our offense isn't the issue. Um, it's been the back end of our pitching, obviously. Hey, so obviously, uh, with uh, well, the Thursday start, Howard hasn't faced anybody on the Nationals yet. So the guy to look out for in the first two games outside of Juan Soto is I'm going to go with the other outfielder, and that's Victor Rob- uh, Robles. Uh, 400 off Arietta. Um, he sent 400 off Arietta, and then he sent 500 off Nola, uh, while Juan Soto sent 190 off Aaron Nola. So a little bit of a differentiation there. Uh, Soto's off the hot start, obviously. Um, so just another guy to look out for there in this Nationals lineup, uh, a guy that's killed the Phillies lately, um, it is Victor Robles. So I'd say uh, I, I'm going to say it's it's going to be a good series. I mean, I think these two teams are – the way they're, they're kind of getting off here is pretty close to even between these offenses and um, and then the staffs, obviously, different pitchers pitching well and whatnot. Um uh, so I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to see what, what this team brings out after getting that tough series against Atlanta, how they respond this upcoming week. So before I give my final prediction and before we, we wrap this up, what's your uh, final series prediction here in these three games? Uh, again, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, I would say uh, one Harper will probably be a guy that steps up big against his former team. Um I think that'll happen. I think uh, Reese is starting to look better, uh, finally. So hopefully that continues, and I think it will. So those two guys, I look to step up and continue to step up in Harper's sense, and Reese continue to get going. So I think those guys will step up. A series prediction would be, like I said at the beginning, I think it's more of a watch. The only reason I gave Fetty the advantage is he is a first-round pick. They had He has potential, and it seems like he's starting to show it. So if that is the case, Jake is obviously showing a tail end. Fetty's showing a beginning. That's more why I went with that there. But if they both pitch their best, the Phillies could win that first game and really should if they're in position to do so um, with the pitching adjustments they made and acquisitions they made to the bullpen. So I would say that should be one game. Corbin, and I mean, that's a good matchup. I would say you probably would want to win that game and win the first yeah. two if you want to win two because it's going to be hard to bank off of your young guy against Max Scherzer. Um, so if you want to get two out of three, I think it, I think ideally you want to win the first two and then the Nationals would salvage the series with Scherzer because I think it's a lot more difficult to expect your young guy to just out Max Scherzer. So. No, I agree completely with that. I think the winner of game one is going to be the team that wins the series. Uh, I think we win NOLA, and then they win Scherzer. Uh, so I think it's going to come down to this first game on the series. I'm going to take two or three. Phillies win this upcoming series. Um, but I don't know if you have any final thoughts here uh, on this show. 
obviously, uh, please, if you like what we do, uh, like, subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel here. Check us out on Twitter and all that. Um, but, yeah, uh, what, what's your final thoughts here? Uh, just keep uh, trucking along, and hopefully the Phillies keep building with this bullpen and everything gets going. Hembray looked great in his first outing, so hopefully he builds on that. We haven't seen Hale yet. And uh, Workman needs to work on his uh, – no pun intended, needs to work on his curveball a little bit. Uh, so, but he, he admitted to that. So I think he'll be fine, but I mean, we just need to keep right on rolling, get a couple wins against this national team and try to get back in this thing here. But other than that, have a great safe and pleasant day, everybody and enjoy all the baseball and other sports you're able to watch during this all day sports fest that's going on in the world right now. <laughs> no, absolutely. Echo everything of that. And like you said, got to get back on track here. Need to start climbing up in the standings. Uh, here with almost almost fifty way or fifty percent through the season, so it's time to get on a roll here, and hopefully the area can start that with Nola following them. But again, another here's another great episode of Jet Pat Jet Packs to the Bank uh, for Joe and Andrew. Have a great day and enjoy this upcoming series. Peace out. <laughs>